All right, <clears throat> so here we go. Today's Revit tip is about linked views, okay? Linked views are a very kind thing that you can do for your consultants. As an architecture firm, you can do, you can make a view that your consultants, either structural or MEP or whomever, can use, and it is a nice, clean view that they can use as an underlay. I'm going to show you how to create those and how to use those right now. So let me share my screen, and then we'll go from there, okay? So here we are in Revit, all right? So I'm also going to go to, hold on a second, I'm going to do this. <laughs> All right. So here we are. What I want to do is go to the plan of this building. Now let's just say I'm working along and I've got dimensions in here and blah, 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 blah. Okay. I've got so much stuff in here that the mechanical guy comes to me and he says, Hey, I need an underlay view or a, I need a nice clean view so that I can do my, um, so that I can do my work or the MEP guy or the structural guy or somebody says, I really need this, an underlay that is clean. Please, could you provide me a view? And we say, sure, because we're nice people. We're nice guys, you know, and we're going to do this for them because it's the right thing to do to help out your consultants. Because if you don't create a nice clean view, what they have to do is link your model into theirs and they'll go like to their first floor plan. And then they have to go through the business of turning off your furniture, turning off your, your hatches, turning off anything that you, to your textures and anything that you've got in your model so that they can see the exactly what they want to see and it's a big hassle for them and they can they do it yes but a kind gesture and a way to work together that's what BIM is all about we all work together to make this you know this finished product so what I'm going to do is show you how to create a view that is nice and clean and ready for a linked view in the MEP or structural guys file okay so here we go <clears throat> Excuse me. What I'm going to do first is right click on the uh, the view that I'm in, the plan view. Let's just say this is the one I wanted to create a clean view of. And I'm going to click on duplicate view with detail. The reason I wanted to turn on duplicate view with detailing is so because when you do that, it makes an exact copy of the view you were just in. Exact copy. With all tags, dimensions, notes, everything. That way, I'm not cutting any corners and you guys get to see this live, how to actually do this. So, I'm going to rename, I'm going to right click on this new view that's called Copy One. I'm going to rename it and I'm going to say For um, Linked View. Okay, For Linked View. Done. So now, what I need to do in this view, I'm going to first turn off the view template control. I'm going to just put that on none so that I can turn things off quickly at random. So I'm going to, and I'm cleaning this up right now. I want to turn off all of my dimensions. So I can right click and I can say on, on any dimension, I can go down to hide and view category. And it turns off all of my dimensions. I could do that with any category, like right click on my um, sections, hide and view category. They turn off. That's one way to turn things off. You can also hit VG on the keyboard. I'm going to go over, I want to, what I want to turn off are these elevation markers. You can turn off everything here. Go to annotation and you could scroll down to elevation markers and uncheck them. It's even in, and if I say, okay, then they go off, but it's really easy to do this. You go VG on the annotation categories, you can uncheck this one checkbox up at the top. It turns off all the annotation in this view. All of it. Doesn't matter what it is, turns it off. That's a quick way to get rid of all that. 
But now we're left with model objects and we don't want all of this stuff visible like this. We don't want the furniture. So I could hit VG, scroll down to furniture and uncheck the box and hit OK. And the furniture goes off. But we're not done. I also would like to turn off the, t if you can see it, there's texture on the floor and there's also the wood texture on these stairs. I want to give these guys a clean underlay. So I am going to prep this even further. I'm going to hit VG. I'm going to go down to floors and where surface pattern and floors meet right here. I'm going to click that override button and uncheck the box. And so what happens is the floor texture goes off. I'm going to do the same for the stairs. VG on the keyboard, scroll down to stairs and right here, surface pattern and the stairs where they, where that matrix point works uh, or connects is right here. And I'm going to uncheck that top box for this pattern on the stairs to go off. So it's getting cleaner, but I think I want to make it even better for these guys and not have these extra lines inside the walls. What I'm going to do for them is I'm going to set this view to course and it turns off the lines, all the lines inside the walls. But I'm going to go one step further. I'm going to colorize the walls to like dark gray so that this just pops out for them. So here we go. VG. I'm going to go down to walls. And so I'm looking over here where the cut pattern for the walls is. I'm going to make the cut pattern solid and dark gray. Okay. So there we go. So we've got ourselves a really nice view to give to the MEP guys or the structural guys as an underlay. Okay. You with me? So here we go. All I have to do is hit save on my project. I'm going to save it. I'm going to give it a nice name. Um, architect file for under, no, linked views for linked views. This could be just the architect's file for this project, but I'm giving it a real name so we can find it in a minute. I'm going to hit save. Okay. So now we have created a view in the architect's file. And I want to give this now to the MEP guy or to the structural guy. So I'm going to do that. Here's what I do. I hit save and I, I close it, file, close. And I send this file over to, I put it on an FTP site or I put it on BIM 360. I give it, I got to give it to my engineers. Now I'm going to be say the structural guy. So here we go. I'm turning around. Put, put on my structural engineer hat. Put some uh, a uh, pocket protector and a bunch of ink pens in my pocket and pretend that I'm the structural engineer now. Okay. So I've just got notification on um, BIM 360 or on the FTP site that we're using that there's a file that the architect has sent he could have sent it with, with any of the transfer mechanisms in the whole world. It doesn't matter. And so I downloaded it and now I've got it. And I'm going to make myself my own file and link his file in because I'm the structural engineer. I don't want to get cranking on getting these, this thing done. Okay. So here we go. Wait for it. Should have made this file earlier, but then you would think that I was pre making things and, and it wouldn't be real time. And then you would think that there was something tricky going on in the background. Don't you hate it when guys just click one button and everything's done. You wonder how they did it. Well, I try not to do that as best I can. Okay. So here we go. We've opened a brand new file. I remember I'm the structural engineer now. Okay. And I'm going to go to 3d and now I know, I know, work with me here. I've got to get rid of everything and pretend this is, there we go. I'm going to pretend this is a brand new file that we just got. Okay. I'm going to get rid of all the stuff. I have a few things in my template guys that, um, you may or may not, um, Hey, I don't care. Get rid of all this stuff. Delete. Okay. Um, so what I'm doing right now is getting rid of everything residual that's from my template. There we go. Okay. Now, 
Now, we've got a clean file. I'm the structural engineer now, and I am going to link in that architect's file, and I'm going to start getting some work done, okay? So here we go. I'm going to click on Insert, and I'm going to click Link Revit. I'm going to go find his file. There it is, architect's file for linked views. Good. I'm going to link it in internal origin to internal origin so that everything is apples to apples and it aligns exactly inside my file. So when that file from the architect links in, I've got the textures on and the walls are not how I want them. And I have expressly told the architect to please give me a file, a view in his file that I can use as an underlay. And I'm hoping that he listened, okay? In fact, wait, I'm gonna check an email. Mm -hmm. Aha, yes. The architect sent me an email and he says, there is a file, I mean, a view in the file called um, four linked view, views. So that's what I'm gonna use for my first floor underlay. Okay, so I don't have to, as a structural engineer, I don't need to go in here and mess around with the visibility graphics of the linked file at all and, and try to remember all the things that I need to turn on and all the things I need to turn off. I can trust that the architect provided me with a clean underlay. And it's we're going to implement it right now with a thing called linked views. And that's the reason for this video, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I am going to also set my view template to none right now so that you and I can work. Okay, here we go. I'm the structural engineer and I want that linked underlay on right now. So I'm gonna hit VG on my keyboard. All the tabs are here for turning on and off my objects, right? I can turn off my walls and doors and beams and columns or my annotation objects, whatever is in my file. That's what these buttons are for. But there's a button at the end for Revit links. And you'll notice here that there is a link in this file. It's the architect's file for linked views. It's the one that we linked in from the architect, duh, okay? But this button right here is set to, you'll see it, it's set to by host view. That means it mimics anything we do. If I turn, if I, the structural engineer, turn off columns, it's gonna turn off columns in their file. If I turn off my floors, their floors go off. If I turn off furniture, their furniture turns off. It mimics me when that button says by host of view. But I don't want that. I want to have control over all my stuff, but I want the architect, his stuff, to rep be represented by that view he promised me. So here we go. I click on this button that says by host of view, and there's an option right here at the center at the top. It says by linked view. And it's going to be represented by the linked view. And in the drop down, he promised me he would make me a view. And I can look for it here. Wait, there it is. First floor plan for linked view. When I click that and say OK, it sets it in there under display settings. It says by linked view now, which is good. And when I say, okay, take a look at what happens. It represents that linked model from the architect exactly how his view shows. If he, if the architect had left one piece of text, it would show here. If he had left on dimensions, it would show here. Anything, anything that that view has on in the architect's file will show up here, okay? And so that's pretty cool. So I can now start putting in all my columns and I'm going to do that now. I'm going to go to the uh, mm -hmm, column. I'm going to go to structural column and I'm going to, let's see, I need some structural columns right here and right here. This is a very, in fact, we need two or three out in the middle of the floor to hold up the ceiling in that room. And this bathroom needs a couple um, beams. There's a good column in the toilet. So see, I can start adding my objects and doing the things that I need to do, but the view that's coming in from the architect is represented by exactly what's in the view he provided me. 
and it's called a linked view. And all I have to do is hit VG and go to the link and switch it to that. Okay. I'm seriously hoping that this helps for you um, when you're working with other consultants. So you can provide them. If you're the architect, you can provide the, your team now, the rest of the consultants with a view to use as their underlay. You probably want to make one of these for your first floor and your second floor. You could make one for your reflected ceiling plan if you want. And so that it's exactly what the um, consultants need as an underlay for their work. So they don't have to mess around with visibility graphics of your file. And if you're a mechanical, electrical, or a um, structural, plumbing, any engineer, you need to be asking the architect that you're working with in his file to provide you with a clean view that it, that you can use as an underlay. And all you have to do is tell them the way you want it to look and they just set it up one time and it's yours. Okay. All right. I hope that helps you guys. It's great to pass on this kind of understanding, but this right here is really valuable when you're working with consultants. So talk to them, see what they need, provide a view for them, and go from there. Okay? I think that's about all we can do right now on linked views. If you guys have any questions, just ask them in the comments below, and I will address them. All right? Until next time, happy reveting. Bye-bye.